Hello folks, for I'm the one, the only, I am a Hobo Tom, and I'm here to, because I finally found time. Last week was a little bit hectic, as you can tell by Friday night, I had a special guest over. So yes, that special guest does take precedence over my wrestling show, although she, this time she was a part of it, which is pretty cool. Um, so let's see here. I, you know what? I, 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 wait, I didn't move this computer. Wait, what the heck's wrong with this? There we go. That's a little bit better. Should be. I can never tell. But yeah, let's see here. Yeah, for the most part, this is where it should be because there's the door of wrestling. Yeah, that's about where it should be. That's pretty cool. Oh, my cell phone's going off. I'll get that in a moment because I'm going to go to bed like probably right after I finish making this video, let it process overnight, upload it in the morning, because heaven knows it's way too late. You know what? Again, I would like to thank that very special lady. I'd like, pass that on my couch. That was cool. I also have some thank yous, or I have some shout outs to give. Jay, uh, you know what? I'll save that. I'm, I'm going to save you for the end. I have a special shout out for you. Corey Williams, you sir are a true wrestling master. Oh, the best of the best. The pantheon of Just Incredibles, Lance Storms, Kid Cash, Mike. Awesome. So you, sir, you always win twice because you get that six count. Robert Hines. You know what? You're just a master of the air guitar.
Abu, Abu. Bobby, Bobby. You're, just chilling out you're just chilling out to your briefcase boombox. Boom box. Nerd! Nerd! You can crawl out of here. Oh, thank you very much for reminding me about the Dark Side of the, of the Ring, especially since on Wrestling 2. I did need that information. See Higgy! You always win by Dirty Pen. And will rally support rally, you sir, a member of the El Generico Band. Oh yes, I forgot to mention one person. JF, you're a jackass. Yes. Now I'm done. And those are all the thank yous again. Thank you very much for Twisted Pixie for taking time out of her busy schedule to spend time with the one and the only Hobo Tom. Let's start to talk about Monday Night Raw. Um, again, this is one of those Raws where it's definitely bookend. And this is something that's happening more and more so with WWE for whatever reason. Oh yeah, before I get to that, I do apologize because I did have a special lady friend over. I could not make my prediction video. Um, I have no idea what happened at Victory Road. But I did hear Tommy Dreamer got suspended though. Um, for his comments, which I don't know, I'll, I'll talk it. I'll, I'll I'll spend only like two minutes on this. So I'm at four minutes thirty three seconds. At six minutes thirty three seconds, I'm, I'm back to to raw. Um, I did watch the Dark Side of the Ring episode, the plane ride from hell. Kind of what I suspected. Uh, you hear things um, again. The hair cut off. The, um, the cutting of the ponytail on uh, that X Pac did to Michael P.S. Hayes, the wrestling match between Brock Lesnar and Kurt Hennig. I did not realize that it was severe, and I did not realize that you could break a airplane cables that way. Um, what else was there? Yeah, Scott Hall just being so pilled out, out of his head. Ric Flair, everyone knew about that. Uh, Dustin. I could believe that he would get drunk and sing sad songs on the PA speaker. Um, people roofing others or H-bombing them, whatever, whatever you want to call it. I believe that. I think it was good to hear from other wrestlers' perspectives, especially underneath wrestlers. Like to hear Just Incredible, RVD, Tommy Dreamer, um... To hear what they were saying, mainly because they were kind of witnesses. And prior to Sunday, I think, from Just Incredible, he was like, what the hell's going on in this plane? Um, it was interesting to hear JR's comments. A lot of non-comments. Um, Brock Lesnar did expose himself to Terry Reynolds on the European trip. That, that I didn't realize. That kind of sounds right. Again, I will say this, even though probably none of those things are great to do, for that period and time frame of wrestling, do I believe it? Yes. It is a little bit, that I'm not going to go all cynical and really come down on the people. 
like Steven Larson did, man. They like buried Ric Flair. I mean, I know they're they're entitled to their opinion. They buried Tommy Dreamer. Tommy Dreamer was probably like, yeah, this happened. Tommy Dreamer and ECW probably saw a hell of a lot worse. And again, if you take in the, the time frame, the, I've always said this. People have said the worst things about Hulk Hogan. Um, I haven't defended him, but I've said, hey, you have this over-the-top figure. You know, the Hulk, the Hulk Hogan brother is like the 11, but Terry Bella is probably not that far underneath. Again, Macho Man Randy Savage up here. Randy Poffo, probably right about here. No one knows. Like, like this is, <laughs> Ric Flair is up here. No one even knows where Richard Fleer is. On that scale. New Jack even admitted it. Probably admitted it. I'm New Jack. I'm not Tyrone. Or I'm not Jerome. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, Jerome. I'm New Jack. Where does New Jack end and, and Jerome begin? New Jack was up here. I'll tell you what. I think Jerome was like right there. So very hard to tell. Again, it's a whole... I hate to make excuses but it's kind of generational thing maybe it's probably my age and knowing what's been done and seeing certain changes in the country maybe that's why maybe I've been this desensitized to it who knows maybe it's because again playing rugby uh, playing football, high school in like the uh, early early nineties. Um, being a collegiate wrestler, a high school wrestler, you kind of had that very machoistic attitude towards things. Again, if you're a star like Ric Flair was, again, to equate to like the NFL, when Lawrence Taylor did very bad things while playing with the Giants. Coaches look the other way. That third string offensive tackle, he did one thing wrong. He's out of there. Lawrence Taylor, again, you're used to living with a kind of different set of rules. And that's probably enough said about that. Again, I found it refreshing to hear it from the stewardess's point of view. It was good. It was different. Um, I brought a little perspective to it. You did kind of feel bad for her that, that she was in that whole situation. Um, my takeaway from that, especially with her comments, when, when she said, well, my husband would say, what did you do to deserve that? Speaks to me a little bit about that relation. And again, when they opened the show saying, yeah, it was fun to be with the boys in the hotel bar. Ugh. It, if you watch the whole thing, it put it in perspective. But then, then again, it, if you just didn't, if you took the whole thing as a whole, you're say, yeah, I can understand that. Remember, these guys were stars. You have the airline stewardess. You're partying with the woo, Ric Flair. I was talking to um, the guy at the gym. And I'm like, what would you do if Ric Flair would come in here? You'd be like, hello, Mr. Richard Flair. And, and I'm like, you know what Richard Flair would do? He'd be like, woo! Richard Flair would just woo. And yeah. Like, I could see Richard Flair coming into to my store looking for a pair of shoes or sneakers or something. And I'm like, oh, you're Richard. F I'd be like, white eyed. I'm like, oh, wow, you're Ric Flair. And he'd go, woo! And I could just see him doing that in any establishment he was going into. 
and and women would probably swoon over him still. Um, maybe not so as much again age and and now you have certain women saying, ah, oh, he's an old guy. Woo! I could again I could see Richard Fleer walking up and down the little pathway for the open aired mall, going woo, or walking into a place, walking into journeys. It's time for some high styling, woo, profiling, woo. Of course, with that younger generation, they would probably be lost. But still, I could see Richard Flair. I could see Richard Flair, just being Ric Flair. And geez, I think my one question I would ask is, how did you manage to get through all the territory days? Because the travel and everything else, that would just be amazing. That would just be amazing. And I'm, and from what I've heard, he's a storyteller. So I would just literally just lean there, and be like, "Wow, that's awesome." But Dark Side of the Ring, an excellent show. I do recommend everyone watches it. He has a lot of background. Um, I will call Stephen Larson a bunch of wussies not watching the one about Grizzly Smith. That was probably more dark side of the dark side of the ring. But again, it explains a little bit of the behaviors of Rock and Robin and Jake the Snake Roberts and what they dealt with and what they become, what they did. Um, Jake Roberts, again, uh, very well known for his uh, drug use and uh, womanizing. Um, but eventually kind of realized, hey, I can't be doing this forever. Something bad's going to happen to me. I think uh, with Rock and Robin, it was more so of the drugs and alcohol. And then she realized it's like, hey, I know I'm doing this now. I, I can't. This is not a good nor legitimate coping mechanism for me. It worked for a while but yeah the long term stuff's beginning to wreck me so again that's more the, the dark side of the dark side of the ring where it, it focused it had some some aspects of wrestling in it more so the background which honestly I appreciate more of um I don't mind saying that uh, if you guys would ever want to hear my thoughts about the dark side of the ring shows if you want if you want to ask me something specific in the comments there's some new email about it. Hey, can you actually review? Can you tell us your thoughts about Dino Bravo? Yeah, he was. I, I do have my thoughts about um, the Canadian strongman Dino Bravo. Um, a man tried to work for his. Tried again. Tried to provide for his family. His family absolutely loved and adored him. Um, he just fell into that very singular path where wrestling was what he knew, was what he did. And he knew some very unscrupulous people in that evil place called Canada. Boo Canada. Evil Canada. America's hat. That's what I have to say, but I digress. So again, always leave a comment. I, I will feel free. Or if you would like to, like to hear, or if you want to see Twisted Pixie and I do a review on the dark side of the ring, shout out at us. Um, my face does look a little bit different. Um, again, I got a lot of sun. Twisted Pixie probably got more sun in one day due to the past five years. This is my typical, like, after fishing glow. So hopefully you won't... Hopefully I'm not looking red. I don't think it looks orange, at least. Yeah. It's probably red. Parts of it's tan. It all depends what was hitting the sun. I know I think I'm already beginning to blister... A little bit. Oh, that's not a blister though. I don't know what that is. That's not good. <laughs> but yeah. Again, let me know what you think in the comments somewhere. Yeah, I do apologize for being late. I just had a busy and hectic week. Now, let's get to Raw with everything being said and done. I'm going to start off with RK Bro came out for a promo. Bobby Lashley came out. Then Biggie shows up with a briefcase. Hmm, indeed. Uh, the first match of the night was, woo, Charlotte Flair taking on Shannon Baszler. 
A little recap of what happened between Charlotte Flair woo, and Nia Jax. They didn't show the good stuff, though. None of it, wait, none of it was good. Parts of it were just shoot entertaining, though. That's what they didn't show, though. They didn't. They, they didn't show. They showed parts of the match, but they didn't show the. They didn't show the interesting parts of the match. I'll call it that. Um, she had a classic start. Um, again, the kicks in the knees. She needs to work over the arm of Charlotte. Um, Charlotte then hit some chops. Um, it's not as awkward. As Charlotte's matches with Nia Jax, maybe Shayna is a little more seasoned, a little more ring savvy, and I need to change that. But that's okay. Um, so yeah, that's the way that went. It just it felt more like a wrestling match. It felt more like a work than a shoot, like the whole Nia Jax affair. And, and the last Nia Jax Charlotte Flair match was terrible anyway. Um, Again, the moonsault. Moonsault, this looks like she overshot her because she landed like square on her feet and probably like tapped her on, tap, uh, Charlotte probably tapped Shane on the, on the shoulder and, and Shane is sold. So give her, give her credit for that. Shane that German suplex, any of the wrestling, traditional MMA, Shane looks great at. Then Charlotte begins to work over the knee, gets the pinfall. Um, Nia Jax gets up. Again, Nia Jax's timing just seems off. I'll say what, overall, pretty good match. Cheeseburger match. Then we go to Drew McIntyre and the Viking Raiders taking on. They call them the Viking Raiders. Oh, yeah, that's right. They call them the Viking Raiders. Wait, do they? Yeah. Yeah, that's right, because they started off calling the Viking Experience, and that was just god awful. But yeah, so it's the Viking Raiders. Drew McIntyre and the Viking Raiders taking on Jinder Mahal, um, Veer, and Shanky. Shanky just doesn't sound like an Indian name, though. Um, I don't know. This, this was an okay match. Nothing great. Um, the big, uh, again, Veer looks huge. Very strike heavy. Um, Drew was good. Drew eventually just takes out everyone. The Viking Raiders do all their Viking Raiders stuff. Very typical match. Um, Shanky ate the Claymore. He ate the pin. Again, one, two, three, Claymore time. Um, I think I caught this match about halfway through. Because I think I came home right about then. From work. It was an okay match. Um, Shanky and Veer need a lot more work. Drew and the Viking Raiders seem to work pretty good together. Overall, that's a ham sandwich match. Then, is the New Day back together? Indeed. We'll see. Um, Reginald is roaming backstage doing his parkour be behind the behind the stage. I don't know. It's okay. It's nothing. Meh. Then we had Damien Priest taking on Jeff Hardy. This is pretty fun. Um, Priest Priest and Hardy start off. Classic tie up, um, very much so a face versus face matchup. Nothing kind of dirty going on. Um, Hardy hits the Jeff Hardy hits a Hardy combo, which is be, almost becoming like well, I can't say the five moves of doom. He never gets a pinfall off. Of, he never gets a pinfall victory off of it. But it's like the um, what was it neck breaker. Double feet to like the the solar plexus, uh, side Russian side Russian leg sweep, and a few other things he strings together. It's pretty cool though. It's becoming a little bit more repetitive. 
again, I don't mind chain wrestling that much as long as it's not like the five. If you're just doing the five moves of Doom, yeah. Um, Jeff Hardy's tweaking into that level a little bit. Um, just call it the Hardy combo. That was a terrible inverted kick. Uh, a couple false finishes by both wrestlers, and Damian Priest eventually. Damian Priest eventually hits the. Um, Reckoning move, and this just looked ugly. Um, Jeff Hardy loses. Damian Priest wins. Solid face versus face match, though. Cheeseburger match. Again, Jeff Hardy is such a pro. It's it's hard to say anything bad about him. Sheamus comes up, jumps Priest. Yeah, we all know how that goes. Then there was. Uh, Rhea, Rhea Ripley and, and Nikki Cross were backstage and they got confronted by Tamina and Natalia. That's no, okay. Um, Big E visits RK Bro. And then the first match was Tamina versus Nikki Glenn Cross because I refuse to call her Nikki A A S H. It's Nikki Glenn Cross. That's the way I. That's the way I want to remember her. Um, I did. I did remember there was one poignant saying. Again, I've heard it a couple different ways. Rob Van Dam says you never want to meet your heroes; they always disappoint you. Um, I prefer the phrase. You don't want to be a hero too long because eventually the hero always becomes the villain. Heroes that live lo heroes that live long enough become the villain. So, yeah, um, with this, this was a quick quick match. To me, he just kind of mauls poor, poor Nikki Glenn Cross. Uh, Nikki tr uh, tries does the, tries to go for the ten punches on top. Uh, to me, he hit like one right hand. Nikki hit a tornado DDT, and then I swear Nikki Cross kind of went like this, as if like to throw up the X. And I think she injured herself. There's something weird to her shoulder. Um, she honestly tried. Tamina, um, I think Tamina got still got the pinfall. <sighs> Something screwy happened in this match. At one point, again, once I saw that X went up, things got a little bit awkward, and just not as smooth looking. Actually, I think Nikki won. But then she just like literally went off with that tornado DT. I think, I think Tamina's enough of a pro, even though there's no one meaner than Tamina. Where she knows that, yeah, I just have to take the loss and she just has to get out of here. So I, so I, I forgot to underline it. But, yeah, I think Nikki Glenn Cross won via Tornado DDT. It was weird. Um, can of soup. So, yeah, Nikki seemed to put up the X sign herself. Um, she does probably seem more old school where she's not going to just like lay down there and like writhe in pain, but actually try and finish the match. If she separated her soldier, uh, separated her shoulder, you know, it's a pretty intense pain moment there. It's something you can kind of work through a little bit. She is my choice to work through it. And that's going to lead us to Rhea Ripley taking on Natalia. Uh, much more of a wrestling match than the previous one. That Aussie headbutt's no good, though. Um, Rhea seems to hurt herself more than her opponent when she does that Australian headbutt. Again, Samoan headbutt, number one. Scottish headbutt, number two. American headbutt, number three. Canadian headbutt number four. Oh, wait. You know what? I, I'm going to revise that a little bit. Smoan headbutt number one. Scottish headbutt number two. No American headbutt's right. Number three. Shibata headbutt number four. Canadian, actually, yeah. Canadian headbutt four. Shibata headbutt number five. And then you have any New Japan 
headbutt six because they just seem to do it to each other all the time. And then somewhere there you have the Australian headbutt, the seventh most of it, the seventh least, or, or the seventh, I don't know, probably the number one least effective headbutt, or the seventh least effective headbutt, or the seventh great, yeah, not seventh greatest. That just sounds weird. But yeah, that's the ranking scale of headbutts. Um, Natty hits that slingshot into that butt drop thing. That just looks awkward. I don't know if it hurts, though. Like, and then, of course, she went for the drop kick. Rhea Ripley does have an amazing Northern Lights bridging suplex. Whenever I see that, that just looks pretty. Again, Rhea goes for the standing grill lock, which is great. Natty, again, trades, uh, reverses that, gets into a, a sharp shooter. <laughs> I'll say <tell you> what. <laughs> she went... The knees to tits. Oh, that's right. She like literally knee. You put her knee across the tits of Rhea Ripley. That just looks weird. Um, Nikki came down. Eventually distracted Natalia. Natalia went for the dirty pin though, but now she got stuck in the standing gorilla lock the second time. Then she tapped out. Rhea Ripley wins. So much better match. Cheeseburger match. Then this match was really weird. It was... I think I actually fell asleep for part of this match. Ali and Mansoor taking on the New Day... Um, with... Ali and Mansoor with the New Day. Taking on Mace. T-Bar. AJ Styles and Omos. Omos just eventually takes it all four. They get all their movesets in. AJ, AJ still has an amazing match. A uh, couple moves. With Kofi... And more so, um, Xavier Woods, a little bit with um, Mustafa Ali, Mustafa Ali, not so much Mansoor. Um, eventually, in Mace, Mace and T Bar just there to, just to beat up people. Um, Omos, he just takes out all four. The New Day get launched out of the ring. Ali gets slammed by Omos. Omos again is a personal colossus. AJ Styles. Mace, T-Bar, and, a and AJ Styles with Omos win. Yeah, it was still a ham sandwich match. Then we had Dewdrop versus Eva Marie. Um, Eva Marie did get, this was a fast match. Eva Marie got some quick shots in. Dewdrop, again, was just too strong. Um, uh, she missed the sent on the first time. And the Scottish headbutt. Number two ranked headbutt, as far as I'm concerned. Um, then she did the running fun splash. Uh, the, um, Dewdrop hit the second, second sent on after the failed roll up. Fun splash. Dewdrop wins. I could have cared less. I just wanted to see something from Eva Marie. Vagina. Nipple. Everything. Even just a little bump there. But yeah, that was, I don't know, that was a can of soup. Karen Cross gave a promo. Um, parts of it sounded really good. Parts of it did sound super scripted. And then we got to the main, uh, the main event, or what I thought was going to be the main event. We'll find out. It was Randy Orton taking on Bobby Lashley. Um, Orton out of the ring, quickly, quickly again. He frustrates and distracts. Uh, well, he frustrates Bobby Lashley. Bobby Lashley gets gets distracted by Riddle. 
Um, eventually, Bobby Lashley just throws him into the barricade on the table. He's like, I'm having none of you. I'm going to... You're, you're, you're done with this match now. Um, Bobby eventually climbs to the top rope. He gets caught by Randy Orton. It's a superplex. Again, Randy, too much time outside the ring. Um, just kind of very predictable. Again, Bobby Lashley posts himself. He did hit the dra- draping DDT. But Bobby Lashley comes back. A spear. And Dominator on Randy. I forget if the Dominator came into play. It's so one big spear by Bobby Lashley on Randy Orton. Bobby Lashley wins. But wait! It's not over yet. Big E comes out. Oh, don't you dare be sour. Clap. For your money in the bank briefcase holding New Day partner. And feel the power. Big E. Yes, it is. Dun. Dun, dun, dun. Um, Big E, he climbs. Bobby Lashley says, you're not going to do that. He's like, oh, I'm doing Oh, yeah. I'm doing this. Yeah. 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 Um, that was a fun match. They started, they tried to hit um, their, their, own, their own finishers. Bobby Lashley went for a dominator early. Big E slipped out of that. Big E went for the big ending early. Bobby Lashley flipped out of that. A couple posts, a couple other moves later. Big E does hit the big ending. On Raw, we have a new heavyweight champion of the world. Big E. So don't you dare feel sour. Clap. For your new WWE champion and feel the power. It's a biggie day. Yes, it is. Um, that that last match only because you know what the Randy Orton Bobby Lashley that was a, that was a good match, solid match, cheeseburger match. And then the Big E, uh, the Big E victory, because it was such a surprise. It was really short, though. But cashing should be short. Because of the surprise factor, this is going to be a surf and turf match. So that was it. Last Monday Night's Raw. Um, I'm going to try to do a lot better this week. Um, schedule for this week. Let's see here. Nothing crazy is going on, so which is nice to say for a change. Uh, my day is gonna be my day at Raw. Oh, yeah, that's weird. Tuesday will be NXT Soup Day. Wednesday, I, I'll probably do a live stream of AEW. Thursday, I'll still do my live stream of Impact. We'll see what happens really to Tommy Dreamer. Um, Friday, I won't be able to do the SmackDown show, but I will do the eight, at least one hour of the AEW Rampage. I'm not going to stay up too late. And, oh, wow, look at that. The 20th. Oh, and also this week, I'll do my predictions video. So I shall put the, I shall pen you in that day. Video times two. So I'll have to do my prediction video for whatever they're doing on twenty. I forget the twenty six. I think Extreme Rules. Because then they go to Saudi Arabia next month, and we'll see what happens there. Again, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Please like, share, comment, subscribe, and you'll see me. Oh wow! Tomorrow for a change. Bye.